Good morning, everyone. My name is Dustin Klein, publisher and chief content officer of Smart Business. On behalf of Smart Business, it's my honor to welcome you to the 2022 Medical Mutual Pillar Award for Community Service Recognition event here in the greater Cincinnati region. Each year, we come together to honor organizations and individuals whose efforts have made a significant impact on people's lives by giving back. We're so pleased to have all of you join us here this morning, especially since we needed to pivot to a virtual conference during this most current COVID uptick in cases. Despite the circumstances, it's always heartwarming to bring people together who share a common belief that by coming together and giving back, by reaching out a hand to our fellow man and woman, that we can strengthen the communities where we all live and work. Now, as you're aware, this is more important than ever and everything that each one of us does makes a difference, no matter how large or small. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Medical Mutual, our founding and title sponsor. Their team's commitment goes beyond mere words. Medical Mutual transcends its role as a healthcare insurance company and has become a dedicated partner to this region and its residents. So thank you to Rick Chiracosta, Shannon Hero, Andrea Hogben, Christine Taylor, Dan Polk, Frank Bloomquist, as well as your entire teams for your continued support, not just of this event, but of the entire region and state. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we started the Pillar Award program back in 1998 with our co-founding partner and title sponsor, Medical Mutual, to recognize companies for giving back to the community. This year, 2022, will represent the 25th anniversary of this program later this year in Cleveland. Now, this is the 13th year we've been able to present the Pillar Awards in this region. Now, we truly miss being able to present this in person as we had planned to do this year. But like everyone, with the recent Omicron spike in cases, we're being cautious, we've adapted, and we look forward to being back in person in 2023. Now on to the show. In addition to recognizing for-profit companies for their corporate philanthropy, we also recognize and honor individuals who run the nonprofit organizations that do great deeds throughout this region. The individuals who serve on their boards and donate their time, their talent, and their treasure to causes that they're passionate about. And the individuals for whom philanthropy is simply part of who they are. On the screen, you can see a sampling of the nonprofit organizations that have been supported and recognized through the Pillar Program over the years. Today, we will recognize 21 honorees with Pillar Awards a combination of organizations and individuals. Nominees were judged based on numerous criteria, including an organization's overall philanthropic efforts, such as financial, pro bono, and volunteer contributions, involvement on the boards of nonprofit organizations, a nonprofit executive's ability to lead his or her organization towards successfully delivering upon its mission, and an individual's personal commitment to community service. During this morning's program on video, you will hear from individuals and organizations being recognized about what giving back and the tie between the for-profit and nonprofit worlds means to them. So on to the awards. To present the first one and say a few words about Medical Mutual, please welcome Shannon Hero. Shannon? Thank you, Dustin. And on behalf of Medical Mutual, we'd like to welcome all of you to this year's Pillar Awards. And let me echo Dustin's comments that we had planned to be in person this year, but like everything else over the last two years, it seems as though getting back in person has become a day-to-day -day journey. That said, we are elated to be presenting this year's conference once again to such a well-deserving group of honorees. The companies and individuals you'll hear about and meet this morning truly define what it is to have a giving heart. So let's meet our first award winner, and that is the winner of the 2022 Medical Mutual Share Award. The heart of Medical Mutual's charitable giving lies in the Employee Volunteer Committee SHARE, which stands for Serve, Help, Aid, Reach, and Educate. This volunteer initiative began more than 20 years ago when a small group of employees knew that they could make a bigger impact in the community if they did it together. And it was 17 years ago when we honored the first organization with a SHARE award. Ever since, we look forward to bestowing SHARE on an organization who employees are key influences in the community service. It's with this focus on the greater Cincinnati community that we present this year's SHARE Award to FINIT. FINIT's philanthropic approach allows it to impact countless people and organizations. FINIT provides opportunities to donate time both individually and through corporate volunteerism. 
For example, Cincinnati-based Finnishians mentor students at schools and challenge communities through the Adopt-A-Class program, creating and sharing lesson plans, tying math concepts to the real world and careers. In addition, employees support the program outside of mentoring by collecting donations to provide students with winter hats and gloves. And donations that exceeded the cost of items for the class went to the school's Mad Hatter Closet, where students can select shoes and clothing items at no additional cost. Congratulations, Finnit. Now let's hear a little more about what the company has done from Finnit's Nicole Emerson. Hi, Nicole, congratulations again. Hi, Shannon, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be honored. Yes, it is. And I'm excited I get some time to talk to you about Finit. So I just have a couple of questions and maybe to help us understand how you guys have been so successful. How do you involve your team members from idea generation to execution to make your philanthropy really a team and employee driven effort? That's a great question. And we try very hard at Finit to ensure that the activities that we present to our staff to choose from are activities that feel good to them, that are something that they're interested in, that they align with our core values. And we try to give a variety of opportunities. So for example, when we gather together at our company meeting in the spring, we typically travel to a location and we allow people to choose the event that they wanna participate in. So we have things that are a little bit more maybe manual in nature, maybe things that connect a little bit more with the organization's recipients, maybe something that relies on their strengths associated with their work, their, the stuff that we do for work. So mm -hmm. it's really just trying to be mindful and thinking through any opportunity that we can provide. Yeah, and by doing so, you create opportunities that probably meet everybody's needs and gives them th something to be excited about. We try, we really try. Like we did an event in Savannah a few years ago. Um, we have a lot of folks on staff that are dog lovers. So we made sure that we partnered with a, an organization that supports the local um, animal animals in, in the Savannah area. And we got to cuddle puppies as, as part of our <laughs> hard work as a reward for our hard work. And that was one of the, the most popular things. Again, we try to meet people with the things that they're interested in and, and that they do in their personal lives. That I would have been at that event for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was. It was so fun. <laughs> so another question for you. How has your employee driven philanthropy really helped to build or strengthen engagement among your team to really make Finit an employer of choice? I think it's again goes back to these events that we hold where we gather people together. You know, our folks are spread out across the United States. So when we gather, we really want an opportunity to not only do something from a team building perspective, but also give back to the community. And people talk about that during our interviews. They talk about how not only do we invite them, but we invite their guests to attend as well. So it becomes a true family event. And it's part of the fabric of our, our values, our, our culture, and the fact that we even consider ourselves a family. You know, it's not just our employees, it's their guests and, and people that they're connected with as well. Creating a really inclusive environment from the top down. Yes, we try. <laughs> <laughs> so can you share some of the impactful volunteer or philanthropic efforts that you've been able to be a part of, which you are most proud of or most proud of your team, or maybe something that you spearheaded and really went above and beyond on? Maybe something around the lines of Adopt-A-Class? Yeah, that's. I mean, we do work with Adopt-A-Class in Cincinnati, and we've had a great response from our team, both there and across the country. With COVID in the last few years, we moved to a virtual format. So some of our folks that aren't connected in the Cincinnati area, we're able to participate and the feedback that we get is really, really, really uh, strong and high and, and in favor of continuing those programs. In addition, some of the things that we've done around the country, you know, we partnered with the Detroit Youth Choir and you may recognize them from America's Got Talent. They came in and performed and we were able to give them backpacks and stuff full of school supplies that our folks put together for them. and. It was just a really good event to be able to connect with a group of kids that were just incredibly talented and really deserved everything that we could give to them. You know, we've partnered with the United Way in Cincinnati for some of their tummy time programs and provided uh, blankets for them and just other organizations around the, the, the country. One of my favorite stories, if we have just a, a second of time, is we yeah, volunteered yeah. in cent Central City neighborhood of New Orleans at Apex uh, youth center. 
and it's an after school program for kids who are at risk. It's, it's not a great neighborhood. So this is a good opportunity for them to come and get a warm meal after school, help with their homework. This particular uh, facility has partnered with a number of very popular folks that you might recognize like Imagine Dragons for a recording studio and Tim Tebow for some sports equipment. So not only did we get to do things with them like help refresh their facility and do some cleaning and some, some work that really needed to be done so they can continue their mission, but we also got to play their basketball team. Unfortunately, the FIDIP folks may not have won, but it was such a great event and being able to connect with the kids in a way that was meaningful for us and for them. That is amazing. And obviously one of the very many reasons why you've been honored with this. So thank you very much to you and your entire team. We appreciate all you do and congratulations. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be considered and thank you for, for bringing this to light in Cincinnati. I know there are a lot of organizations that do a lot of really great stuff. Yeah, you bet. Thanks again. I appreciate your time. Thank you. You too. Congratulations again. Now let's watch our first video of the program about this year's honorees. Well, from the very beginning, we felt that uh, we had an obligation as developers uh, working in different communities, different neighborhoods, to do the best we could in our development process to make a contribution to those neighborhoods, to make them better than they were before we arrived. For many years, we invested in human capital. We invested in people who wanted to be volunteer tutors. And, um, and I think that's kind of the best investment you can make is when you make that in people, because you're not only investing on the person who's receiving the help, but also in those volunteers. It really empowers them to have an active role in their community and to understand the plight of their neighbors better. We love uh, our community programs because it's all designed to be community centric and employee driven. So there's three main aspects of our program. First is we give to uh, what we call our Gorillas Give Back charities. We have six of them. And what's cool about the charities we give to is that they were chosen by our employees. We gave them the option. We gave them a long list of things to choose. We want to transform our world. And the way that we can do that is to reach outside of the walls of our office and to connect with our communities and understand how we can impact them in the need that they have. All of our employees are given $100 in eight hours of time to donate to a cause that, that they feel personally passionate about. One of our programs is called Tenant-Based Rental Assistance, and it works with families to keep them housed. We had a man with his family, he was a painter. And of course, during COVID, he was laid off, he didn't have any work and he lost his home. And through our Tenant-Based Rental Assistance Program, we were able to work with him to get him into a new apartment and to actually get him uh, employed too. There are a couple of communities in Cincinnati area that didn't have the access to the internet connectivity. And so what PowerNet did, we went down and we set up a free internet in one of those communities. And we actually went, went out and gave out some tablets and then sold some tablets at our cost to allow people not only to have access, but to have a means to use that access as well. This is an organization for people and companies who really want to do more than write a check. They really want to go beyond giving um, and maximize their impact by using their business expertise. So it makes for a really nice group of people. Um, my role is to support the organization strategically as well as in the management of our programs in the community. When people are doing great things in their community, they want to get up, they get this great feeling and then they come to work and feel great and they're even going to do better there. But that feel good that you get drives people to do better every day. So you better be a good company and have great people to do great things. We so appreciate the support of the corporate community in sponsoring our events and sending volunteers to work directly with the clients and to really increase the community's awareness of the challenges that face people with disabilities. So I think the one really lends itself well to the other.
Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's been said that time is the most precious gift that a person can give. In every organization, there are executives and employees who donate personal time, treasure, and professional expertise to help nonprofit organizations in whose missions they believe. So it's with this in mind that we recognize the 2022 Nonprofit Board Executives of the Year. There are three honorees this year. Let's meet them. First, Donna Bloomer for her work on the board of Redwood. Donna's contributions to the community and to Redwood Foundation have been stellar and unwavering. An attorney, Donna started working with Redwood, which guides children and adults with severe and multiple disabilities to achieve independence and reach their highest potential as a volunteer in high school. And when she had a child with a disability, she became an involved parent. Since then, Donna has become an active, dedicated volunteer serving on numerous committees and as an active member of the board. And she led the planning and execution for the 2021 Redwood Express, one of the top grossing events in Redwood history. Congratulations, Donna. Next, Eric Hamber, board chair of Sweet Cheeks Diaper Bank. Eric's dedicated to serving and giving back to the community where he was raised. His impact on Sweet Cheeks, which partners with the local social service agencies to provide free diapers to low-income families is far reaching and has been a major factor in its growth, health and future vision. Eric's strong hands-on leadership by example style is a stabilizing influence. His words and actions bring confidence to the members and allow them to function at levels not always seen in an organization of sweet cheek size and type. That higher level of overall function allows for more opportunities to meet and grow its mission. Congratulations and thank you, Eric. And our final honoree is Aswad Akilamak, board chair of Rosemary's Babies Company. Rosemary's Babies Company is a teen parent and family support organization. Aswad, a founding member, has been key to taking it from a startup to a successful 501c3. Five years ago, when he and Rosemary D. Oglesby Henry were teen parents, they heard the calling to offer their support to teen parents. Today, RBC celebrates healthy babies, high school graduates, employment, and independence. Creating opportunities for STEM learning is a key passion for Aswad, and under his guidance, RBC created a play area with STEM toys, sponsored a trampoline tap-out STEM fundraiser, and earned grants to support computers and learning materials. So let's learn more about the organization and Aswad's efforts. Congratulations, Aswad. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. So let's talk a little bit about your involvement with and the impact that Rosemary's Babies Company is making on the region. Could you share a little bit about the organization's creation and why it's become so important for both you and the teen parents it serves? Absolutely. So uh, Rosemary's Babies Company uh, was birthed by founder Rosemary Oglesby Henry. I've known Rosemary for 20 years. Uh, she used her life experience as a teen parent, her education and leadership, and personal trauma to create a resource for uh, teen parents. You know, I, I was honored uh, when Rosemary set me down and asked me to support her in shaping her vision of this organization as a founding board member. Uh, this, very, this organization is very important to me, uh, our volunteers, our partners and the team parents that we serve um, because every day we are working to take advantage of the opportunity to change the trajectory of these young parents lives and their children for the better so rosemary's babies company since 2016 has been the only organization in the tri-state and local region to successfully focus on the teen parent population ages 13 to 19 but as young as nine, you know? So uh, the goal of our organization is to change the outlook for teen parents, break that cycle of generational pregnancy and poverty, and to alleviate the dependence on, on governmental programs. We as an organization have been able to serve more than 1,200 families over the past five years. Uh, we are excited about our strategic plan for the future uh, that includes goals to increase our community impact and to continue to support our teen parents through potentially the, the scariest and most vulnerable uh, parts of their lives. 
Uh, so, I, you know, one of the things that's impressed me about the organization is that as you've grown over the past five years, you've been able to build a strong board and establish some engaging partnerships. How has the board and those partnerships helped the organization expand its services and its reach? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I, I will say experience innovation, civility, and a family-centered approach are the guiding principles for our five years of success, okay? So in, in managing our organization by these guiding principles and uh, continuing to, to refer to these ideas has allowed us to successfully attract and recruit community leaders who are committed to this sort of passion work that we do, this work of enact, enacting significant change within our communities. Our, our strong board members all have great character and uh, have a very strong commitment to our cause, okay? We give ourselves, uh, we give our time, and we are willing to tap into our personal and professional resources in order to advance the organization's mission. So as a young organization, those relationships and partnerships have been essential in opening doors and getting us into the room where uh, some of these key decisions are made and, and discussed. Um, through these engaging partnerships, we've been able to expand some of our advocacy work, allowing us to partner with social agencies, different leaders, uh, government officials, uh, working to evaluate systems and to rewrite policies that are unjust or biased. Policies that could potentially render our team parents helpless. Uh, we would not be able to achieve this level of success that we've seen over the past five years without, as you stated, uh, our strong board and our committed uh, professional partnerships. You know, are there any big initiatives underway uh, over the past couple of years that have been near and dear to your heart as a board member and as somebody who supported it since the beginning? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> absolutely. So there, there, there are several big initiatives. Excuse me. There are several big initiatives that we are that we're working towards as an organization that have me just just pumped, have me extremely excited. Uh, I'll point out two of them uh, for you. So, first, I'll say uh, is continuing to build out our leadership and legacy program, which focuses on specific core areas of development for our teen parents. Those focus areas include uh, parenting, education technology, arts, leadership, and social determinants. Uh, within that, we've started to incorporate a kind of a STEM thinking way into the programming. That's science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. The second initiative that we're working towards is expanding our reach into our communities by opening our Holloway House and Resource Center. So we envision this state-of-the-art transitional housing facility to be impactful in supporting teen parents and their babies. Right, based on data from the uh, quality of life plan, Cincinnati, Ohio is number one in the country for childhood poverty. Avondale has almost four generations of families who live in poverty, have adverse childhood experiences, are teen parents, or at risk of becoming a teen parent. RBC has found a property in the heart of Avondale uh, we are in the middle of a capital campaign to purchase this property, which is currently owned by the Port Authority. RBC currently has an exclusive six-month term option with the Port Authority that stipulates that our organization raise 100% of the estimated $1 million in reno renovation cost in order to qualify for the purchase. As of today, I decide to say we are 60% to go and have just three months left mm -hmm. to raise the balance. So this is an exciting time for the organization, you know, as we look towards the future. Sounds like you got a little bit of work to do, but it sounds like you get good supporters and uh, time to kind of just kick it into high gear with them. Yes, um, exactly. So what can we ex expect to see? Yeah, what can we expect to see next? You know, as, as the organization looks to continue to, to, to help change the lives of these okay. teens, um, what can we expect to see next? Is there going to be uh, opportunities for, um, I wouldn't call them reunions, but to bring these folks together to share their stories with others on a regular basis? Oh, absolutely. We, we definitely have those type of events and situations where we, where we get together 
uh, to understand where our, where our team parents are and and where the community is. But uh, but what what you can expect to see next is you 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 can expect to see more of the same from this organization. So we will continue to lead. Uh, we will continue to stand on our organizational values and guiding principles. We will continue to be advocates for our team parents. So our roads and immediate efforts are being directed towards our $1 million capital campaign in support of expanding the vision of RBC and creating a safe transitional housing environment for our team parents. In, in, the, in the past year, we have put together a team of strategic partners to deliver financial stability, as well as to ensure this renovation like our organization is, is best in class, okay? So a few of our leading partners are Melvin Gravely of Traversity Construction, mm -hmm. who was a team father and has been a champion for this project in our community. Uh, Bob Heil, uh, Joe Coors of KLL, KLH Engineering, uh, Vince Terry and Dana Moody, uh, 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 Dana Baker of, of Moody, Nolan Architects, uh, we have posted videos of these leaders on our website where they are basically just highlighting uh, their support for this project. Um, so what's next? We, we're, we're encouraging our supporters and all who are interested in learning more about our organization to go to our website. Uh, you don't have to be, to be rich or wealthy to donate or support. All efforts uh, go towards helping to change the outlook uh, for our team parents. Excellent. That's why it is a, it's an organization that's doing the best kind of work possible, which is impacting the next generation. So congratulations again, and thank you for everything that you and RBC are doing in the community. Dustin, thank you for, for having me. This is definitely an honor. I appreciate it. Congratulations once more to our 2022 Nonprofit Board Executives of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to send the program back to your tables, where we'd like you to spend the next few minutes networking. And if you'd like, share how your organization approached community giving during this past year. If you're a nonprofit leader or a team leader, what did you do and what did your organization do to fundraise during these challenging times? Or how did you connect with your constituency to ensure you were able to serve them? We'll see you back here in a little while for the next part of today's program.